Hello everyone, and welcome to the lab. Today we're not going to be building anything, or busting out the soldering iron, or anything like that. Instead we're just going to play some games. And what better system to play games on than my favourite console of all time, the Super Nintendo. And this isn't just an ordinary PAL Super Nintendo. It's been modified to include the Super CIC chip, which removes the region lock and enables me to play games at 60 Hz in the NTSC region. So this, for example, will enable me to play my Japanese version of Kirby's Dream Land 3 here. Hoshi no Kabi 3. I believe it's just 3. So um, <laughs> that's how you're supposed to pronounce the 3 character there. Um, for the Super Famicom. Um, and the apart from that, I also have a number of PAL cartridges here, as you can see as well as the Super Everdrive, which should enable me to play many games from various regions that I otherwise wouldn't be able to access. So we'll play some various games there, some, some of my favorites, which I'll show off at the end. But before that, I want to try out two perhaps unusual peripherals that I also have for this machine. In addition to my Super Famicom controller, which is just the ordinary controller, except with slightly different branding. Here it says Super Famicom. We also have a regular controller, which I don't know where it is. It's over here. Whoa, there go the cartridges. Okay, I fixed up all of that mess that just happened. Um, I won't stack my cartridges so high in future. Um, so I also have the Super Nintendo controller, just the ordinary one. But those are just ordinary controllers. What else do I have? Well, I have this perhaps unusual controller, the Quick Shot, which is a joystick for the Super Nintendo. So it has all the usual buttons that are normally on a controller, but in different locations. So to move, I can use the joystick itself. And the A button is the fire button on here on the back. Um, and then the, or yeah, on the back like this. And then um, the other parts are B, B, X, Y. And then L and R are on the base over here. L and R. And then we also have start and select at the front here, as well as some interesting features that I haven't experimented with yet. Turbo, which is a switch here, which I assume allows you to do rapid repeated presses of buttons. I wonder if... Uh, I can think of a game where that would be useful. Hmm. I'll think about that. As well as this switch here, which says slow. And I'm not sure what this slow switch does either. Um, but we'll test it out and see what happens. Try a few different games where it might be useful and see what all of these things do. So that's the quick shot. So we, we'll test that out first. And then I have another peripheral here. the SNES mouse. So we'll bust out a mouse pad and take a look at the SNES mouse. I've never used one of these before. Um, so I want to try out many games that I love for the Super Nintendo, but they're just a bit annoying without a mouse. And I want to see if the mouse makes them easier and if indeed they do support the mouse, because I've heard some stories about some of them that are a bit unfortunate. Games which really need a mouse and some, for some reason they just don't support the SNES mouse, even though it had been released when they were made. It seems to me that most of the games that support the SNES mouse were actually for the Super Famicom, so they're actually Japanese releases and they were very rarely ported over to the West. It seems like the main draw for the SNES mouse was this game, Mario Paint, which I have never played either. So I've never even used Mario Paint, so I will try all of these things out today and you can get my reactions to them. So that's going to be the video today. We're just going to play some games on the Super Nintendo. So the first game that I want to try today is UN Squadron. The reason I want to try this one first is it might be useful to have a turbo button on here. So let's just take the default target area. Blah, blah, blah. And I'll use just the regular fighter. And I'll buy that. Actually, uh, 
I hate joysticks. I generally don't like using them for directional navigation. I much prefer D-pads, but um, there are some games where they are warranted. Okay, here we go. Alright. Alright, so I have to, by default, I have to mash this key just to launch lots of bombs. Oops, I'm just gonna die here. Now I'm gonna... ah. It's alright. Now I'm gonna turn the turbo key on. Alright, try it again. Yep, and we'll take... Oh, okay. Alright, well, I can't test out the turbo yet because I don't have enough money. So, I'll just use this as normal. Oh, let's test out the slow motion button. Oh, I guess it works, kind of. That's sort of awful, the way it does that to the audio. Is it just pressing start really quickly and pausing the game? Can I like... Oh yes it is, because it just advanced through the menu. That's just... Oh man, that's just... What? <laughs> what the point? What's the point of that? That's so stupid. Okay. Well now I can afford the bomb so I can try out the turbo. And let's get clusters as well. I hate joysticks. There we go. Alright. So now I can. How do I switch weapons? There we go. Yeah, right. So now I don't need to match this key if I want to waste all my bombs like this. Cool. Alright, now I'm out of bombs and I'm probably going to die. Let's just... Do as much damage as we can on the way out. Oops. Don't fly into buildings. There we go, and we did. Yep, I really don't like controlling games generally with joysticks. Um, and this game is no exception, but the turbo button is appreciated. But the slow motion button is just pausing the game and unpausing it really quickly to simulate slow motion, which is a really stupid feature. It's just a gimmick, really. Okay, let's try some other games. I'm going to try... This game. Which is called Turn and Burn, No Fly Zone. And this is... PAL cartridge, so I should probably switch this to PAL mode. Okay. Can I get into the game? So this is a flight simulator. Alright, so now we are throttling up the engine. Now the guys run away and they're off. We've taken off. We're on our mission now. Which I don't I did not pay attention. Whoa. Okay, I did not pay any attention to the mission, but I assume we just need to go and find things and shoot at them. Whoa, holy crap, this is so sensitive. Ugh. I am already getting motion sick. I managed to strafe him a little bit. Let's strafe him again, there we go. Uh, oh my god. Oh, it's so nauseating. I hate flight simulators. 
And if, if they're not in space, I can usually handle it. No, I'm getting hit. I can usually handle it if I'm not in space. Yeah, no, if I'm in space. But if I'm not in space, then it just is so disorienting, particularly when it's not an actual 3D game and it's just sort of simulating it with this sort of stuff. It just... Let's just crash straight into the ocean. There we go. Yeah, okay. Um, I can't really easily control that. Although using the joystick does feel very natural. Um, it's probably a lot more natural than using a controller on this would be. But, uh, oh man, it's just... Oh, my eyes and my brain just can't handle those games very well. Okay, another thing I want to try, which would definitely benefit from the turbo button, is Street Fighter 2. So we've got a Street Fighter 2 cartridge here. If it'll focus, there we go. Um, and this will dem definitely benefit from the turbo. Should be able to spam kicks and stuff. I don't usually play flight fighting games, but I'm not uh, opposed to them in pr on principle. I do like them. All right, I'll just play as Ryu. Why not? All right. Yep, the turbo makes this substantially. <laughs> anyway despite having the uh, turbo probably because I'm trying to use the turbo too much rather than trying to win and also controlling the directions with the joystick is a huge pain as I have mentioned before oh no it looks like I might oh time over well that's pointless I won by default I guess because um, I have more health Okay, so this is the last thing I want to try today um, for the joystick, and that is Pilot Wings. This is a very famous um, flight simulator released for the SNES, and I think this might be a bit easier for my brain to handle than um, this one. Turn and burn. This one was just a bit too intense for me, and my brain just sort of got overloaded the moment I started trying to play it. So no, I don't want a demo flight. I, I'm fine. I can, I can handle it. Let's try it. All right. Let's try and join, earn our flight license. Okay. Okay. So A is speed up. B is speed down, okay. Whoa, what's with the graphics? Why is it flashing like that? Okay, so I'm going to try loading another DSP one chip game, Super Mario Kart, and seeing if it has the same problem. Oh, it doesn't even seem to properly start. So it turns out that because this is a clone Super EverDrive, not um, the latest and greatest original version, which was really expensive and I didn't want to fork out for it, it doesn't support the DSP-1 chip that Pilot Wings uses. So I don't think I can actually properly test Pilot Wings using this um, cart. I'd have to actually get the original console, uh, the original cartridge, 
and the same applies for other DSP1 games like Mario Kart, so that's a bit disappointing, and I'll have to consider what I'll do about that. Okay, so I guess that'll do for our exploration of this joystick. Generally, it functions just like an ordinary SNES controller, except the directions are with the joystick instead of the D-pad, and the buttons are in different locations. It has this stupid, pointless, slow gimmick, which just um, mashes the start button repeatedly. And it can also mash other buttons repeatedly, which is a bit more useful um, using the turbo switch on the side. But apart from that, it's just basically a differently shaped conventional SNES controller. So now let's move on to the SNES mouse. Um, I don't know if it needs to be plugged in to the second port, like next to the controller, or if it has to be the only thing. Um, let's try it as the second port and see what happens. And we'll put in Mario Paint, classic game for the SNES mouse, and let's just see if it works. Oh, I think that switched into 60 hertz, which it shouldn't have, but I'll check. We'll see if it behaves too fast or anything. Okay, the mouse isn't moving at all. All right, the controller is now completely unplugged and we just have the mouse. Okay. All right. There's not very much momentum on this cursor, but it does work pretty well. All right, if I click. Hmm. Got to click on Mario, I see. Okay, it's very comfortable to hold. It's actually quite a nice mouse to, like by feel of it, it's quite nice. And the, the ball sensitivity is all right. Let's say the my raw mouse handwriting. Yay! We'll draw a smiley face. Maybe use a thicker. There we go. What does the right mouse button do? Nothing. Currently that just seems to... Not sure why that's Luigi. Hmm. Okay, that's the spray can. Ah. We get borders. We can make borders out of anything we want. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, is this dog undo? Huh. Nifty. And you can do circles much the same. Ah, you can copy and paste this way. And this is your eraser. I don't know what the right click does. It doesn't seem to do anything. We can put in proper text this way. Right. I mean, typing out a full sentence this way would be painful, but doable, I guess. Oh, we've got Japanese too. Uh, so something I can t write easily that doesn't require me to move to another page. Oh yeah, okay. I can write, oh. Su. Shi. Which is, very nice Japanese food. <laughs> All right, what else we got? There's these. Let's try. What's this? 
Hmm. Oh wow, you can do weird animations and stuff. Nifty. Okay. There's a music section. Oh wow, you can write your own music. Ah, oh, these are different instruments. <laughs> so let's do like C major. Whoops. Oh, well, let's do some weird, dim weird chord thing then. Can you do chords? Let's just do parallel thirds, I guess. Something like that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And let's have something. <laughs> That's very cool. And oh, wow. OK, I could have so much fun just playing around with this. Oh, okay, so you've got a maximum of three. Oh yeah, you've only got a maximum of three, okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm writing here. This is all very nonsense musically, but... Oh, okay, you can get Game Boy beats too. Oh, can you, so you can, <laughs> oh, that gives you a free chord in a way. <laughs> oh, you can get some bass in there. Can you do like accidentals, sharps and flats and stuff? Doesn't look like you can. Except perhaps by... Ah, okay. Like that is sort of off and off that you could probably simulate some sort of accidentals, but it doesn't look like you can really do proper ones. Oh, it's got some presets. Oh, of course. Oh, that's great. What else we got? Ah, oh, it's Twinkle Twinkle. And Awesome. That's really cool. All right. That's just, it's so cool. There's so much random stuff in here. Right, you can save and load here. Right, you can change the music here. Ah, finally. Ah, that's so much better. Having some proper mouse sensitivity here. Ah, that's so cool. Right, so let's just see you can show it off. And that puts the... Oh, this is a game. I 
I think I'll exit. Ah, so the right click actually did something there. It actually allowed me to get to that menu. Right, and now we're back to the paint again. Well, this is a really fun little cartridge. It's full of so many little nifty utilities you can have. Right, and this allows you to flood fill the whole page, right? That's a really fun little thing. It's a cool idea. And it's just filled with so many fun things. I know as a kid, I would have just played around for hours with this if I had had it. That's really cool. So this game apparently also supports the mouse. And if this wasn't, um, didn't support the mouse, I would have included it in one of my favorite games because I really do love this puzzle game. It's called um, Mario no Super Picross. So it's just Picross, but um, it's one of the best ones, I think. Right, start. Okay, so I know that because this is 10. Right, so I can just play this now with um, mouse instead of with the controller although I'm kind of used to playing it with the controller so I'm not really sold that this is actually better but maybe as I get more accustomed to it I'll feel a bit more comfortable using it And does right click, ah, right click does fill the, in the X's. That makes it a lot easier. Oh, wait, I don't know that. Yeah, okay, with a mouse, this is pretty nice. But the sensitivity is once again really quite low, which makes it quite irritating to get across the board, for example. Hmm, with the mouse, it's pretty good. I really wish I could adjust the sensitivity. I'll see if there's an option for it in a moment after I finish this puzzle. Um, one, 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 these are all ones, these ones start and end in two, so it's like that, which tells me that these are like this, and that's it for that column, which means that these are two, 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 like that, this is Two, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like that. This is also likely the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. That's it for that and that. And that nearly done now I just need to figure out well that's nine and that's nine across so that's that one easy this is two which makes that three already same story over here it's very symmetrical which makes things easier so now this starts with two, which means it can't possibly be in that top point, which means that the five goes there. This is three, 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 three. Okay. Then it's two, one, two. Okay, so this is the one point where it starts to get a little bit tricky. Three, one, one, one. There's only one point here. Okay, that doesn't help. Three, two. There's one of these two, which is filled. Um, I'm going to guess it's this one. And I was right. Okay. Two, one, one, three. So it's like that. Three and then three. Oh, I should have done this one first because it's obvious. There we go. This one has to be one. 
three, two. Okay, yep, you're filled. Three, one, 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 one. You're done. Three, one. Like that. There we go. That's it. We got it. Dharma san rather. So it's a Dharma doll. Um, don't know if you've seen those before if you haven't been to Japan, but that's what that is. So there's no way to adjust the settings. Oh, that's annoying. I wish I could adjust the mouse sensitivity like I could in Mario Paint because um, it really does move quite slowly. So this is a warrior level and the warrior levels mean that you don't actually have the ability to know if you've went wrong so you have to just go entirely based on the clues but I've done this one before it's quite easy so I should be able to do it really quickly um. Like this, we know that, we know this, we know this, we know this, we know that, two, three, four, five, one, two, that's it for this one, this must be three, this must be two, one, two, three, four, like that, that's that one. Um, one, two, three, four, that's this one, that must be like that, must be like this, we have, finish it, cool. So I like solving the puzzles with the mouse, but I really would like to be able to adjust that mouse sensitivity, that's quite a pain. Done. All right, let's try some other games. So this is another classic puzzle game um, implemented for the SNES and only released in Japan for some reason. Apparently it supports the SNES mouse, but maybe it doesn't because I don't seem to be able to get out of this cutscene. What if I plug in a controller? Into the second port. Hmm. Super Sokoban. Yeah, okay. I definitely need a controller in the main port, it seems. Oh, I can use the secondary one, okay. If I start the game, just like start on the simplest level, can I, oh, I can't use the, okay, now I can't use that controller anymore. That's really weird. Let's try swapping these two. Maybe it expects the mouse to be in the second port. Now I can at least do this, and the mouse works too. Right, so we've got a mouse, unlike before, and we have a controller. So. Right, I can use the mouse to navigate the menus. But can I actually use the mouse to play the game, or is it just so that I can more easily choose levels and stuff? If so, then that's a pretty... Yeah, looks like to play the game I actually have to just use the controller. But the mouse support does allow me to use the menus with a mouse, which is a very limited um, use case, really. That seems a bit silly. I don't even know why they bothered. But... I guess they did. 
But yeah, anyway, Sorkoban, I mean, it's just the classic game. Oops. I've got to go back now. There we go. Done. But it's a bit of a shame that I, um, that this doesn't really make use of the mouse beyond just so that I can navigate these menus. No, I don't want to do it one more time. Yeah. All right, and we've got me on to the next level, but yeah, that's a bit strange. Let's try some other games. So I played this game on PC, um, and I never really considered playing it on a SNES because I would have thought it would be so horrible because it's a, essentially a real-time strategy game, so you really do need a mouse. But um, maybe it supports the SNES mouse. Now, I, I'm not very hopeful because this menu doesn't seem to support it. But let's see what happens when I start the game. Hmm. It certainly does not seem to support the mouse at all. What a shame. Alright, so this is the PAL only, by the way version of Theme Park that was released for the SNES and um, it does seem like it does not support the mouse which does to be honest doesn't surprise me but let's just try a few combinations after we've started the game nope not what I meant My name is Liam dot 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 dot. All right. Okay, so the music is extremely obnoxious here. But, as you can see, we can build our theme park here. And I always thought that this was a reasonably valiant attempt at making a version of this game for the SNES, which relied only on a controller. But, I keep pressing the wrong button here. Oh, I want rides. Now I have to pick a ride. Let's build, build the ghost train. There. Exit there. And we want a queue. But as you can see, it's like, it's not perfect. It would be really nice if we could, like, have a bit more than just moving by one tile by one tile and have a proper cursor that can actually be moved around. So let me try um, swapping these controllers around, putting the, the mouse in slot one. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, and, uh, oh, clicking the buttons does open the menus, but moving the mouse does nothing, so it really doesn't respond properly to these signals. What a shame. Because otherwise this game would be quite playable with the mouse. Alright, so now we're going to try some of the Maxis titles. The first one, I'm told, does have mouse support, and it's Simant, which is a really fun game if you've never played it before. Um, it's a very unique concept. Okay, moving the mouse when it's in the secondary port doesn't seem to do anything. Um, at least not in the menus. Let's just try loading the full game here. Alright. And as you can see, I have to move the mouse around with the cursor, with the cursor direction pad keys, which is really annoying. But, if I swap the two controllers. Ah, now I can use the mouse and the sensitivity is great too. Oh, excellent. So now, oh yeah, wonderful. This is so much better. All right. So if I want to, oops, cool.
dig new list. I just right click myself. All right. Oh, so nice. Where should we lay out eggs? Let's let's put them down pretty deep. There we go. Lay out eggs. This is where the queen will be. All right, now I'm this yellow, little yellow ant. We need to go and get some food for the queen. Oh, this is so much better when you're playing it with the mouse. Oh, it's, it's really good. Let's grab some food here, bring it down. I forget how to um, play this game properly, but yeah, just moving the mouse around and, and, and clicking on things rather than awkwardly using the, the, the controller is just so much better. Oh man, this is way better to play and the sensitivity is really smooth. It's not like slow and sluggish like it was in Sokoban or Mario Paint. I can ask the queen to lay some eggs here and she will. And we should get some extra ants wandering around, allied ants. Great. So this is really cool. Really much, much better than it was before. It plays just like a PC game, basically. Now this one, I don't expect to work with the mouse because I believe this came out before the mouse did. Um, so if I start a city here, it's generating a map. Let's just let it quickly do that. All right, that'll be fine. Name of the city is my... Let's use the original name of this game. Well, I can't quite fit the is on the end, but this is still fine. All right. Okay, yeah, the mouse isn't doing anything here. And if I swap it into the front slot. Still nothing. Yeah, the buttons work, but the the cursor itself doesn't do anything. What a shame. It would be really much better to play SimCity with the mouse. But I guess we can use a computer for that. I like the graphics better on the SNES though. All right, so this is SimCity 2000, and this has no excuse not to support the mouse because it was released well after it was the mouse was released. Let's just do a free map. It's, the music is slightly different from the PC version in a way that's sort of unnerving to me. Let's just do this map, I guess. Okay, so the game's coming. Once it's loaded, I will try swapping out the um, controls. So let's try plugging in the mouse. Okay. Wow, yep, it just doesn't support the mouse. That's so terrible because... Ugh, come on. There we go. Sure, let's just call it 11111. And my name is... Ugh. I have to use the, the friggin' controller to type this. Yeah, I don't want to actually read it. Come on. Okay. Wow, this version of the game is just so much worse. And I to move the cur oh, and it keeps slowing down. And to move the cursor, I have to just use the controller. There's no way to move this thing with the mouse, which is just ridiculous because it makes this game basically unplayable.
Yeah, you can't even... Like the SimCity, regular SimCity, you could play with the controller and it sort of works out okay. But SimCity 2000, I mean, it's starting to get to the point where this is just ridiculous. Yeah, no, I'm not going to play this anymore. Okay, so this is SimEarth. And a lot of people aren't fans of this game because it's sort of a bit cryptic, but I really just like setting the parameters of a planet and seeing what happens. I haven't played the SNES version before though. Let's see if it's any different. Okay, here we go. First scenario. Wow, okay. This version of the game is so much different than what I'm used to. Ah, okay, this is more like what I'm used to seeing. Right. Okay. So now if I swap these around, judging from the other Maxis titles, it seems like only Cement really supports it. Yeah, nothing happens here. Ah, what a shame. So this is actually one of my favorite games for the SNES. Um, I would have included it in my later list of just my favorite games, but uh, seeing as I want to test it out with the SNES mouse to see if that does anything, let's um, give this a go first. I really like Aerobiz. It's just a fun game to sort of uh, run your own airline. It's probably the best airline simulation I've ever played. But you have to sit through these copyright notices when you start the game, which is really annoying. <laughs> there we go. New game. I'll do scenario one. Player one is a man. And I will start. All right, here's where I want to see if the mouse starts working. And it doesn't! Nothing happens! Alright, I can click through the menu to get the game to actually start. But I don't think I can actually play it with the mouse. Oh, that's such a shame! I really, really would have liked that. Oh, well. Yep, so here we are. We're in Honolulu here. So these are my goals. Yep, and here's the menu. And yeah, it just constantly scrolls, <laughs> makes the world go around like this because the, the mouse is just sending some weird inputs that it doesn't understand. Ah, oh, that's a shame. All right, so seeing as Aerobiz didn't work, but I know other Koi games do, like Nobunaga's Ambition, um, I will try Aerobiz Supersonic, which is the sequel to Aerobiz, with the mouse. Let's see if this one supports mouse control. Oh, we've got all these copyright notices yet again. Uh, maybe I need to plug in a controller to make this go. There we go. I think this is looking unlikely. It's closest to where I am, so I guess. Oh, are you serious? All right then. Let's see if um, pulling the old switcheroo here will do anything. Let's just get the game. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what I'm supposed to do in this game. For some reason, I don't find this sequel quite as compelling as the original game. 
I just got too many moving parts and too much stuff going on. Alright, so right now I have to control the menus this way, but if I switch to the mouse... Yeah, nothing. Okay, so the mouse doesn't work in this one either. Okay, so this is the Koei published version of Sid Meier's Civilization. Now, I am told that this does, in fact, support mouse control, so let's give this a go. I would really prefer, if I'm going to play it on the SNES, to play it with mouse. And indeed it does. Oh, that's so good. And the sensitivity is nice. Feels good. Let's just play on um, Prince. Let's have four civilizations. I'll be... There's no Scottish. There's no Irish. Let's go for the next football team I would support, which would be German. My name is... Oh, it's so nice just being able to click this. There we go. Wow, this game doesn't look like the normal version of Civilization. Mm, I don't know. The, the language of Germany will rule the world has different historical connotations than... Uh, perhaps was intended. Oh, I can right click to skip. Alright, I believe it's generating the map right now. Okay. There's my settler. Let's make him found the city right here. Why not? The city will be Berlin Shore, even though that's not really historically accurate. How do I tell it to use the default name? Fine, I'll just write it out. Berlin. Here we are. Alright. Uh, it's currently producing militia. That's probably fine, actually. Alright, that's it. I don't have enough cash to hurry this along. Alright, well anyway, the cursor feels great to use, makes the game much much more playable than I imagine it would be with a controller. Um, so I think I'll leave it at that and try out some other games. But this is Civilization and it seems to be great with the mouse. Okay, so this one is the PAL release of Populous 2, which was from Bullfrog Studios here in the UK and apparently this one also is said to support the SNES mouse so let's see if it does so far it doesn't seem to but I'm just using the controller to get in here and we'll see what happens all right, so now I have this extremely difficult to control uh, thing here. If I switch to using a mouse. Oh, it does work. Oh, but its frame rate is just very choppy. It, 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 it's playable, but it's not. Oops, I didn't, didn't mean to do that. Yeah, okay. It's playable in the traditional populous way where right click lowers the terrain and left click raises it. Yeah, sorry dudes, I meant to actually lower your hill all the way down. But it's really quite sluggish. I guess the SNES performance just isn't quite up to the task compared to on a PC. Or maybe I'm just used to a faster PC here. But um, yeah, this version is just a, oh, just moving the mouse around feels unpleasant and not very smooth. It's much better on Civilization and Simant. 
Uh, both of those games, it plays really nicely, but uh, on Populous, yeah. Oh, it's better than the controller, that's for sure, but is it actually good? Mm, I mean, mm, no, it's not. It's not very playable regardless. But I always found these Populous games to be great in concept and they're not very playable in practice because the interface was just so... Ugh, and, this, and it's a bit too sluggish. Um, there's this great game called, I think it's called Reprisal Universe, which is a remake of Populous and it's just, it's so much more playable just because the screen is bigger and the frame rate is better and the controls are nicer and things like that. So if I had to play a Populous game, I'd probably play that instead of this regardless of the fact that I have mouse control on it now. But playing this on a controller would just be an absolute nightmare. And I think they'd have to nerf the AI to make it in even any way fun to play, or otherwise the game would just be terrible. But because most of it would just be wrestling with the controls. But yeah, okay. It does support the SNES mouse. Doesn't really make it very playable though. All right. So this game is Metal Marines. Now this actually is one of my favorite games for the SNES. So even if it wasn't in this mouse list, I would have included it in my favorite games list. But because um, it's sort of an asymmetrical or, or sort of long distance strategy game. And you'll see what I mean when we get into it. So basically you're on an island and you build up your base and the enemy has an island and they build up their base and you just fire missiles and other attacks at each other and send sort of invasions in. You don't like, it's not like a normal RTS where you're sort of in control of all of your troops at the same time. It's like, I don't know, it's sort of like this long, like the enemy island and your island are sort of separate by an invisible sort of barrier and you cross that barrier with your weapons and buildings. See I have these weapon silos here and stuff like that. But what I want to do is um, well firstly we have to deploy our bases in a defensible location. I'll put one here. And um, I'm going to try using the mouse to do this. Let's see if it does work. It doesn't. Well, I can deploy bases. I can deploy one base, but now I can't move the cursor. Yeah, okay. Uh, so the mouse doesn't work on Metal Marines. Oh, that's such a shame, because I really do enjoy this game. But there is a Windows 3.1 version that I play more often because it supports mouse control. So I guess I'll just use that one instead of the SNES version. Okay, so this is Might and Magic 3, which I've played on PC before, but I've never played on a SNES. So let's see how it plays. So I'll start a new game. Yes. All right. Can I just like go? All right, so the game is being played right now. I don't see any cursor or anything I could use a mouse with, but what happens if I plug a mouse in? Ah, I get a cursor now. Okay, so now. Great, yeah, okay, and the cursor has really nice sensitivity. And now I can just click these buttons, I imagine. Yep, I can fire an arrow. I can cast a spell. I can move, I can dismiss members of my party. I can look at my map. Oh yeah, this is so much nicer with the mouse. It's just like playing a PC game. Right, here's the reference chart. Oh, cool. Yeah, we can go on our little adventure now. Yeah, let's leave. 
Here we are in the wilderness and there's some monsters. We're in combat now. Yeah. How do I... Right. There we go. Cool. All right. That works great. All right. So this is a Japanese strategy game that I played a lot of on PC, on Windows specifically. But I discovered that there is actually a SNES version of it. And apparently the SNES version supports the um, SNES mouse. So let's just try a new game. Uh, my name is, where is the uh, move? Uh, oh, what do you? Okay. Start the game. So in this game you have a, oh, let's just get started. So I hope I speak enough Japanese to be able to play this without a translation. But essentially we have a castle here and it's going to produce units and these units are going to sort of behave automatically. Um, what, I can't remember exactly. Okay, well let's try switching to the mouse anyway seeing if that works because um, I can't quite remember how this game is played although I did play a lot of it when I was a kid um, right okay so if I say all right okay like the mouse is a bit oversensitive in fact it's, it's kind of hard to to control well um, if I Tell everyone, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I did know how to play this game, but I, I seem to have completely forgotten. It's been too long. And also I'm not really familiar. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, I finally got them to do what I wanted, which was build houses. Um, right, so these houses will produce more units and then I can use those units to produce more units and produce more houses and so on and so on. It's sort of like populous in that way. Yeah, I don't remember how to play this game properly and the lack of translation doesn't help. But anyway, it is a cool game. I remember really enjoying it, but um, I don't remember enough. But the mouse control works. It's just a bit too fast. Like it scrolls really quickly and then you lose track of where you are and stuff like that. See, but I guess it's playable. You can, you can get used to it with time. Here's my enemy over here. All right, well, let's try some other games. Okay, so this game does apparently support the SNES mouse, which is good because it's a city builder. Unlike certain other city builders, it actually does friggin' support the mouse. <laughs> it's sort of insane to me that you would make a city builder when you had a mouse available and not take advantage of it. But um, at least Utopia does. So let's just do a practice level because I don't want to embarrass myself because I haven't played this game very much. So, okay. Yeah, right. Okay, so the mouse is once again very sluggish. Is there a way I can configure that? Doesn't seem to be. Yeah, it's just, oh, you know, you really got to push the mouse around, but, and there's no edge scrolling. So you do have to click these buttons to move it around. It's better than without the mouse, but it's still a little bit awkward, I'd say. Still, you can have a fun time playing this, I think. Yeah, not sure I like it. I, okay, so this is how I get more. All right, so I can demolish with this. Let's demolish some stuff. Yeah, it's just a bit unpleasant to control. It's still all right. It's better than um, no mouse at all, which is what SimCity 2000 had. Okay, so this game is a classic. 
Lemmings 2. And it was released after the mouse and does indeed support it from what I understand. So let's just give it a go. All right, works okay. It's a little un insensitive, but this seems to be common in older mice in general. So let's just quickly play a map. Sure. Okay, here come my lemmings. And let's... Uh, Wait, I don't recognize many of these abilities. I guess a stomper. Oh, they're all dying. Oh no, I think they're fine. They just, they just fell. Okay. So any sort of blocker? Oh no, stop, stop, stop. Oh, I, I made a mistake. This is going to kill people. Or maybe not. Alright, where's the exit? I actually don't know where the exit is on this level. Oh well, um, it's quite playable though with the mouse, um, it's very easy to target the things. It's a little insensitive but uh, not too bad, certainly it's very playable. Um, let's just kill everyone. And watch the little explosion, there we go. <laughs> Alright, oh dear you seem to have made your tribe extinct. So that is my look at various different games with the SNES mouse. Um, it's a cool little device and there are some games where it's absolutely essential and it's really fun to use. It feels very nice in the hand, it's nice to click on, but there are a lot of games where the sensitivity doesn't quite match up um, and it feels a bit laborious to have to push the mouse so far across the pad. Um, but this is common in a lot of old mice applications from what I can see. And the other thing I'd say about it is the compatibility story is really bad. There's so many games that could support it that just don't. And it's such a shame because some of these games would be made so much more playable with a mouse controller. Okay, so now let's move on to games that I can just play with my regular controller. Some of my classic memories from childhood. So let's just start it up here. So this is one of my favorite games Evo Search for Eden. It's such a unique game because, I mean, it's a bit flawed from a gameplay perspective. It's just a very simple platformer, but it's got so much heart to it and so much character because you can customize your character and in so many different ways. It has such a great soundtrack as well. Do, 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 do. Now that I have enough EVO points, I should be able to spend that on some... Well, I can't afford jaws, but... Oh, wow. Okay, I can afford a dorsal fin. So let's evolve a dorsal fin. And now I have a dorsal fin. And as you play through the game, you can evolve all sorts of new upgrades and different sort of variations on your creature. It's almost like an early version of Spore or something, but with a lot more fun and a lot more charm. It's just full of character. I really like this game. So like everyone else, I'm basically a big fan of the Mario platformers and basically most of the good platformers for the SNES. Um, so this cartridge was one of the mainstays of my childhood. I played through every single game on this cartridge so many times. Um, I'm not so good at the earlier ones, Super Mario Lost Levels I never finished, um, and Super Mario, just Super Mario, I only ever finished with Warp Zones, but I had such a great time playing through all of these games, and they're just so much fun to me.
let's uh, play from my old file where I'm up to world five. Perfect. What a great run through that level. So these are just the classic, this is just the classic NES game, but um, with updated graphics and sound, which I really enjoy. So I do actually own this cartridge, but seeing as my safe game is on the EverDrive, I'm using the EverDrive to play it. <laughs> but Super Mario World is also an obvious classic. Um, it's still poses a challenge to me, although it's a little simpler than um, Super Mario 3, I think. I think Super Mario 3 is probably my favorite Mario game, um, but Super Mario World is also a really nice one. So I think Super Mario 3 is the most mechanically complex of the Super Mario All-Stars and World cartridge, and it's also probably the most fun. I think Super Mario 3 is just a masterpiece of a Mario game. It's probably my favorite one out of all of them. Although Super Mario World is also very good. Um, I think this one just edges it out in terms of inventive levels and amount of content. Although maybe some people will disagree with me about that. And this version here on the, on the SNES just gives it better graphics and sound. So it's just a really nice experience. Get out of the way, you stupid octopus. Ah, there we go. Ah, so I tried to plug in the uh, Hoshi no Kabi um, cartridge and it's complaining. And I think it's complaining because the SNES mouse is plugged in because it's saying something about uh, controllers. It says, Controller ni sashikaete kudasai. So I think something about controllers. I'll try just removing the SNES mouse and seeing if that fixes it. Indeed it does. Right, so having this NES mouse plugged in can actually cause problems with some cartridges. So this is Hoshi no Kabi, Kirby Streamland 3. It's one of my favorites. And it def doesn't even work with um, the uh, Super EverDrive. So it's lucky that I have this cartridge or I wouldn't be able to play this game at all. I think this game is just so cute. Oh, what am I doing? Press the right button. There we go. Oh, I hate it when I do that. I keep, I accidentally um, spawn that stupid guy. I hate him. There we go. I think that'll give me some powers, yep. Yeah. This game is just so cute, and the different powers you can get, and the different friends you can make. Oh wow, I'm not playing well right now. Probably because I'm trying to talk at the same time. But... I've got these witches rolling all the way down the level. Um, the different powers that you can get, and the friends, and the combinations, and all of that sort of stuff, is just so fun. And it's not challenging at all, it's just a light, sort of entertaining platformer. It's really designed for young kids, but I still find it enjoyable to play as an adult. See, we can make a friend with the um, rodent. What is it, a hamster? Gerbil? Not sure, but the gerbil can jump really high. And with the sweeping power, it just seems to be a more powerful sweep. Some of the um, combinations are really interesting though. Can't fly anymore, so it's hard to get these guys. 
Ah, I can jump on the spikes? No, I can't. Okay, I thought I could, but I couldn't. This game slowly ramps up its challenge. Um, like, I'm playing very sloppily right now and still making progress, but... Oh, I like the cat. I'm going to try and get rid of the, my current friend. And switch to the cat. Nope, nope, not what I meant. I don't know the right buttons to press. So the cat has a double jump. And the cat also rolls Kirby like a ball, which is just hilarious. Now I want to get a new power too. Here we go. I think you have a power? Yeah. So with the cat, this boomerang power becomes this energy beam. Diagonal energy beam. Which is super cool. Ah. I'm nearly dead because I've been playing so sloppily. But I think this is nearly the end of the level. Oh, a different friend if I want. Sure, let's let's get some variety. So this is a bird, so the bird can obviously fly even better than Kirby can. Oh, and the boomerang power makes the bird itself into a boomerang. Cool. Come on now. Yeah, this is a nice power. Ah, some health. That boulder doesn't look good. Yep, I thought it was going to. Ah. ah, I'm dead. So this is Yoshi's Island. It's another big favorite of mine, and it's also another um, cartridge that doesn't run on the uh, uh, Super EverDrive, so it's good that I have this cartridge. This is a really, really polished platformer for the SNES, and it's all also one of the later ones, so its graphics are really good, sounds are really good, and it's got a uh, and it's got a really stress-inducing baby noise. <laughs> and basically, the cool loop that you get with this is you can eat and swallow enemies, and then they become eggs. And those eggs you can then throw it at your um, opponents to kill them. Why does it seem fast? Oh, I think I'm running it in too fast a speed. This is a PAL cartridge. So I was running it a bit too fast because I was running it in 60 hertz. Yeah, it, it feels a bit better now. It doesn't feel quite so over, like overly sped up. But we get the black bars on the top and bottom of the screen, which is just an unfortunate side effect of that. Ah. Oh no. The baby. Ah. Yeah. Okay. I've... So this is how you throw a ball, throw an egg, as you can see. Let me find something to throw it at. Ah. There we go. <laughs> ah, I didn't notice that one. I'm playing sloppily because I'm just trying to show off the game, but <laughs> it ends up just being really painful. I've actually played this game through to f completion. Um, it took a while, but I got through to the end. I have played this level before, but I don't really have any memory of it. <laughs> Alright, 
I think that'll do for now because these levels are really long and they're quite sprawling. So it can take a bit of backtracking to find out where you're supposed to go and so on. So it'll take me too long to get through a whole level to demonstrate this. Ah, I probably need to push this down. Yep, there we go. Not sure what I'd use that for though. Uh, maybe to get up here. Oh no, and it despawned, so I have to go back to the beginning. Yeah, screw that. Okay. This is another favorite of mine. Bomberman. This is actually Super Bomberman 2. I like Bomberman 1 as well, but Bomberman 2 just has a couple of extras that make it a bit more fun for me. And I really like the soundtrack. Bad timing there. Ah, that's nice. I've got some boots now that make me faster. There you go. Ah. Let's see what else I can get. So those magnets get rotated by a bomb blast. I wonder what that means. I forget. It's been so long since I actually played this. Oh, I want that. Oh no. There we go. Getting it now. That's what I need, another bomb. What a useless trap I just tried to set. There we go. That got it. And... Hmm. Do I just bomb my way through this door? I forget how the exit works in Bomberman 2. Do I do something with these magnets? Ah, you bomb that button, right. There we go. One of the great things about the Super Everdrive is that it means I can play um, fan translations of games that don't have English translations normally. I do speak a little Japanese, but not really enough to play a game. So um, this is really nice. Um, this is one of my favorite Japanese only games, um, Front Mission, which is a tactics based RPG about mechs, basically. So you build giant fighting robots and you fight your opponents. And I've got a game started here because it's a bit um, there's a bit of cutscenes and so on to skip through if you wanted to just um, see how the game plays. So I'll play around at the Colosseum, why not? So this is just my starting machine. I haven't really done anything with it, so hopefully I will survive. And we'll, pay, we'll play against the least powerful... Looks like Rudensky is the least powerful guy. We'll bet a thousand... a hundred coins. So this is me and versus this guy. So this is just the one-on-one um, -on -one combat mechanics of the game. It actually has a tactical strategy map, which I might be able to show you afterwards. 
Right now we're just shooting at each other. Yeah, and he's already dead. That was easy. That gave me some credits. I'll leave the Colosseum now, and maybe I can go to the shop. Which has great music, by the way. And you can see just how customizable all of your mechs are. You can change all of the weapons in all of the full grips and places. You can attach different arms and legs and computers and stuff like that. The customization aspect is really what gets me about this game. It's so fun to do all of that customizing. You can spend almost over hours in the, just in the shop and in the setup screens. But I won't do that now. I'm just going to launch myself foolishly into a mission. Right, so this is the tactical screen. And once I can actually get into it, I can show you how it works. But it's very similar to a lot of other tactical RPGs of the time period. But note that we do have things like elevation to consider. And here we come in air dropping down. Right. So this is the player phase. And we can move around here. I wonder if the SNES mouse works. Doesn't look like it. So maybe I can attack with him. Nope. Let's see if I can attack this one. All right, I'll just show you so I can choose. Let's give him a punch because that's always lots of fun. So it cuts into that one-on-one -on -one combat that I showed you before. That was a decent punch. Nearly took out his other arm, the arm in which he's not holding the gun. Thank you. That's really useful. Not. Okay, we can attack this guy with our long-range missiles. I'm not playing very strategically, um, but I didn't even prepare for this mission, so damn, we missed. Um, this isn't really just, this isn't really how I would normally play, but it's just to quickly demonstrate the game. Let's use the other weapon. Ooh, that hurt. All right, and now the enemy is going to do the same. So I guess that's all I want to show you today. I think it would be... Oh, I can choose my counterattack here. Um, so I think I'll move on to another game now. So this is another um, Japanese-only release that I very much enjoyed. Um, it's a sort of very unique JRPG. I'm normally not a big fan of JRPGs. But this is just such a unique concept, and it's done so well, that I really did enjoy this. And I think I can skip to the title. Yes, here we can. It's called Live a Live, or Live Alive, or Live a... I don't know. I don't know how it's pronounced. But basically, it's a series of little vignettes, and each of them is quite different. Um, but it's just really cute and really well done. I like the caveman story because no one communicates using words, but I just want to show you like let's do let's do the mecha one because it's just got such a great theme song. So we're lying here on a park bench. The music in this game by the way is amazing just generally. It's got all of the tropes of the various different stories that it's telling. So now I can go around and read people's minds. Then I'm going to get ambushed. Helmet guy, give up quietly. What are these guys thinking? And I read their minds. What a weirdo. If we take him back, our work's done for today. I ain't gonna help you with your work. What? Here comes someone on his motorbike. The runt, he's 
What do you want? I'm just passing through. I'm the Taiyaki guy. So this is the combat, which is sort of a mixture of tactics and JRPG style um, battles. So I will use my heavy violent fist. It's sort of almost real time too because you saw those characters were moving while I was using the menus. There we go. Ah, got the tact. There we go. Fantastic music, even for the battles. You're hurt, I'll give you a lift. So now I think we have the um, theme song to this chapter, which is just amazing. Anyway, we set off on the motorbike. Imawa mukashi no pamironia. Ayogane no kobushika ten wo tsuku. Iyo no machin wo taosu tame. O kori de hi wo tomo se adunata fits. <laughs> so it's just like a battle manga or something ridiculous like that. Just amazing. This game is really worth playing. I highly encourage you to play through it. So this is Kirby's Avalanche, which is just a puzzle game, but it's um, sort of branded with some Kirby stuff. I'll just play on normal. So I'm skipping all the, the flavor here and just getting to the gameplay. So it's essentially just a um, match the colors game. Oops, that was a mistake. Should pay attention to what I'm doing. Oh, that's irritating. But basically, each time you match the same color, you send some garbage over to your opponent. Um, and the goal is to kill your opponent before your opponent kills you. So it's a little bit of a competitive, puzzly, action-y game. And I'm not playing very well right now, but it's okay. This is an early level, so I think I'll still win. There we go. That's good. So... I should have done that better. Maybe try to orchestrate some chain reactions here. Because I'm not playing well right now. But it looks like I might win anyway, even though I'm playing terribly. Because he's not doing so well either. He's got some dead columns there. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, this is terrible. I am playing so badly right now. Really, I've got no idea what I'm doing. There we go, finally a chain reaction. That's, that's probably Doom Doom, I think I've won. Yep, there we go. So this game is a classic game that lots of people will have played. Harvest Moon. Um, 
there's something just really compelling about this game. It's basically just a game where you um, own and operate a farm. If you've played Stardew Valley, Stardew Valley is very obviously inspired by this game. Um, this game is almost basically the predecessor to Stardew Valley in almost every way. Um, but there is still something very charming about this one. So you run a uh, farm and you get to know the townspeople, just like Stardew Valley. It has a bit less content than Stardew Valley, but there's something very charming about this game and its execution. And uh, I can't see how I to get to the end, get to the OK button. Oh, there we go. The music though is slightly off key with the beeping of the text boxes, which I always found really annoying in this game. It sounds very discordant. Um, got some dissonance going on there, which is quite irritating. <laughs> there we go. So now I'm running around the town. Um, it's But I believe in order to um, to progress and actually build the farm, you have to talk to everyone in town. So I won't do that. But if you've played everything like Stardew Valley or things like that, then you can't really go past this game. You've got to give it a try. It's lots of fun. And it's really nice to play an RPG that's just sort of centered on a small setting that you, where you can really get to know each one of the characters and you don't just go traveling all around the world. I really prefer that in some ways. And yeah, some of the music in this is just so off-key. It's sort of strange, but it's just how it is. So this RPG is sort of a little bit overlooked, I think. Um, but it is actually a lot of fun. It's a game where you basically go around adventuring around the world, collecting balls, which are colored red and white, um, which may sound familiar to you. And in, this con in these balls can be things like robots that will fight for you in your battles. So this sounds, if this sounds a bit like Pokemon, except with monsters changed to robots, that's because it basically is. Um, this game is really quite similar to Pokemon in many ways, but it's earlier than Pokemon and it's based around robots instead of monsters. So here I'm waking up and with Professor Akihabara, which is a location in Tokyo, which is a bit strange. Now I can go down there. So now I can use this interface to create a robot. And I'll use my 2000 GP to do that. And these little elves come out of the invention machine. And they build my robot with arms, legs, and a head. And out comes the robot from this thing after a little animation place. There it is. I'll name my robot, of course. Uh, Rob. And now I can choose. Let's take. Let's make him a slow but powerful robot like this. And we'll make him. Hmm. Let's try a nice purpley color. Something like that. So even now, I think you can already see the similarities to Pokemon. The last thing I want to do before I um, leave this game is try some combat. But to do that, I think I need to leave the town. 
and I don't remember the way out. Oh, right, yes I do. There. We have to go talk to our father. So here comes the soldier. Hey kid, are you the son of Dr. Akihabara? Come with me. The hacker boss said to take you as a hostage if the doctor doesn't cooperate. Uh oh. So we, here's combat, and as you can see, I threw my Pokeball or Robot Ball, and out comes my robot. We can then use one of four abilities, including Run. <laughs> it's just so similar to Pokemon. It can't be a coincidence. This. There we go. So we've successfully defeated that soldier. And now we've demonstrated the combat aspect too. Alright, I think that's enough for this game now. So I used to play this game on the PC a lot. There was a Windows version that I played a lot. But um, this is the SNES version, which I haven't played as much of, but it is still a really compelling and fun game. New Horizons. Uncharted Waters New Horizons. So I usually play as Ernst because it's the simplest character to play as. So in this mission, my goal is just to explore the world, so it's really nice. It's just a fun little game. If you've ever played Sid Meier's Pirates, then this game is sort of like the Japanese answer to that, I think. Alright, we're going to sail. So now... We can explore the world. So let's go to the UK, I guess. Let's go to where I am, over in Scotland. Just see. It should be up here. Here we are. I think this is the Firth of Forth. And this is the top of Scotland. The shape isn't quite right, I would say. This isn't really the shape of Scotland, but I think I am right here. That's where I am. <laughs> yes, this is not an accurate map by any stretch of the imagination. But yes, that's where I am. My family are originally from here. Just discovered Dublin. Um, but I, of course, am originally from Australia, and it would take quite a long time to sail there from here. So I don't think I'll be doing that right now. But we can take a look around. See if we can find any fleets. We can engage in combat. All sorts of stuff. It's a lot of fun, this game. I really encourage you to check it out. It's hard to summarize in a short clip, but um, definitely check it out on your own. So this game I played many times for DOS, but I do, never played the SNES version. So let's see if it's any different from the DOS version. Right now it looks exactly the same. With maybe some slight color palette differences, but only very minor. The graphics basically look the same. Yeah, I know the story. Let's just play the game. Hmm. It. Oops. <laughs> well, I would like to restart this level. Let's uh, do that again. 
Yep, Eric's come back. Yeah, this game looks exactly the same as the DOS version. Maybe it's slightly lower resolution because of the net of the SNES graphics, but um, it really is a pretty faithful port. Let's switch characters. Yeah, it's quite natural with the controller. I've never played it with a controller before. It's actually better than the the other way. But the goal is to just get all of your characters to the exit. And this first level is very easy, of course. These Vikings here have been abducted by aliens. It's got a lot of humor in it, and um, the characters are each have their own special ability. So Eric can jump. Um, I forgot this guy's name, but he can kill things. He's got a sword. And this guy has a shield. Olaf, he has a shield. So let's switch back to Eric. He can grab that. We can press this button to turn that off. So we have to destroy the ship's computer, he says. Okay, let's switch to this guy so that he can kill that. There we go. He's got those bombs. Usually it's a good idea to bring Olaf at the front because he can protect all your other guys. Alright, let's send him down first. So as you can see, it's a fun puzzle platformer. It's really good, the levels are really great, and I've had so much fun playing this game in the past. So there's also a sequel to The Lost Vikings, which I also did not know that there was a SNES version of. Um, but The Lost Vikings 2 is also available for the SNES, so let's see how that looks compared to the PC version that I'm familiar with. Or let's even see if it's the same game. It doesn't even look the same. Oh yeah, okay, it does, it looks quite different, but um, it is the same game, it's just the graphics are a lot worse. In the PC version it has much more updated sort of semi-3D graphics at higher resolutions, but this is similar to the first game with its pixel art. But it does look like the levels of the, and the abilities are the same. The witch teleports you. Yeah, yeah, this is the same as the actual sequel game. It's just the graphics are all totally redone for the SNES because the SNES doesn't support the palettes that are used in the later version of this game on the PC. Okay, still, it's perfectly playable and it still looks great. In fact, you, arguably, it looks better than the um, PC version. Depends on what your taste is. Like, this pixel art is absolutely fine if you like this kind of thing, which I do. He's going to protect us from the fire. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, that's going to be it for our retrospective on the Super Nintendo for today. Thank you for joining me as we looked back at this old system and played some of my favorite games for it, as well as tried out these new peripherals, the SNES mouse and the QuickShot joystick controller over here. If there's any games, in particular ones that use these peripherals, that I've missed in my list, then please leave them in the comments section below and I'll be sure to try them out in future. Um, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and if you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.